In perhaps the most predictable update of this election cycle, Donald Trump's former chief of staff, John Kelly, has come out and warned that Trump meets the definition of a fascist, that Trump told him Hitler did some good things, and that Trump wanted generals like the Nazis, which prompted this statement by Kamala Harris at yesterday's CNN town hall. You've quoted General Milley calling Donald Trump a, a fascist. You yourself have not used that word to describe him. Let me ask you tonight, do you think Donald Trump is a fascist? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And I, and I also believe that the people who know him best on this subject should be trusted. Again, look at their careers. For many people who care about this issue, they also care about bringing down the price of groceries. They also care about our democracy and not having a president of the United States who admires dictators and is a fascist. They also care about the fact that we need practical common sense solutions from a leader who is willing to work across the aisle on behalf of the American people and not themselves. P uh, they want a president who cares about a fundamental freedom to make decisions about your own body. Understanding that we're not trying to change anyone's belief, but let's not have the government telling women what to do with their body. And she then took to Twitter, writing, Donald Trump is out for unchecked power. He wants a military like Adolf Hitler had, who will be loyal to him, not our constitution. He is unhinged, unstable, and given a second term, there would be no one to stop him from pursuing the worst impulses. She also posted this, the American people deserve a leader who maintains certain standards about the role and responsibility of the president of the United States, certainly not comparing oneself in a clearly admiring way to Hitler. And of course, because he needs to be the perpetual victim, Trump then took to Truth Social, writing, Comrade Kamala Harris sees that she is losing, and losing badly, especially after stealing the race from crooked Joe Biden. And so now she is increasingly raising her rhetoric, going so far as to call me Adolf Hitler, and anything else that comes to her warped mind. She is a threat to democracy and not fit to be president of the United States, and her polling so indicates. In other words, the problem isn't that Donald Trump praised Hitler or admired how his generals were loyal to him. That part is totally fine, but Kamala acknowledging as much, well, that's a bridge too far. Donald Trump can do it, but Kamala Harris can't acknowledge it. See how that works out? And of course, part of the pearl clutching is the inevitable backup that Donald Trump receives from his minions and mouthpieces. Dave Rubin wrote, I can't imagine why people try to assassinate him. Elon Musk chimed in, writing, major incitement to violence against Donald Trump. Now, so that we're clear, Kamala acknowledging Trump's own words is not an incitement to violence. Remember, it isn't Kamala making it up out of whole cloth, it is her repeating what Trump himself has said. If being linked to Hitler is that dangerous, that disqualifying, then focus the ire on the guy who actually did it, not the person who's pointing it out. Also, if pointing out that someone is a fascist is an incitement to violence, then Elon Musk might want to take that up with Elon Musk, who just last month wrote, the far left fascists love censorship. So if merely acknowledging the existence of fascism is dangerous, is an incitement to violence, then surely Elon would take issue with his own comments, right? And by the way, if likening Trump to Hitler is an incitement to violence unto itself, then I'd really love to hear what Elon Musk thinks about Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance, who actually referred to Trump as America's Hitler, as opposed to Kamala, who merely acknowledged Trump's own comments. Unless, of course, this was never intended to be a good faith attack, and these conservatives are just being partisan hacks for the hell of it. But that couldn't possibly be the case. <sighs> The reality is that ignoring this bad faith pearl clutching by these perpetual victims on the right, including the former president of the United States and the literal richest person on earth, I really hope you're all shedding some serious tears for these guys to whom life has just dealt such a bad hand. Think about the actual reality of what's happening here. Republicans are doing straight up apologia for Donald Trump longing for a Nazi style government. I mean, hell, this isn't just conjecture from us radical leftist Marxists, it's from his own officials. Here's Trump's Homeland Security official, Kevin Carroll. He frequently uh, said to senior staff, uh, why don't my generals support me the way that Hitler's generals su supported him? Uh, and of course, uh, Hitler's generals, for the most part, did not support him. They tried to assassinate him uh, se several times. But uh, just the, the fact that the president would think of himself, the fact that President Trump would think of himself uh, in the same sentence as Hitler is a terrifying thing. The, the, the man quotes Hitler. I mean, you have phrases like poisoning the blood of the country and, and enemies of the people. Those are things said by Hitler and, and Stalin uh, as well. And it's not as if he's accidentally quoting them. When it's brought to his attention, sir, you, 
you just quoted Hitler. <laughs> you just quoted Stalin or Lenin. He doesn't mind. He says it again. Here's Trump's Secretary of Defense, Mark Esper. The president is ranting at, at the room. Uh, he's using a lot of, you know, uh, foul language. You know, you, you, you all are effing losers, right? He's going to finally give a direct order to deploy uh, paratroopers into the streets of Washington, D.C., and I'm thinking with weapons and bayonets. And this would be horrible. What specifically was he suggesting that the U.S. military should do to these protesters? He says, can't you just shoot them? Just shoot them in the legs or something. And he's suggesting that that's what we should do, that we should bring in the troops and shoot the protesters. The commander in chief was suggesting that the U.S. military shoot protesters. Yes, in the straits American of our protesters. nation's capital. That's right. And here's Trump's chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley. The motto has been, this we will defend. And that this refers to the Constitution and to protect the liberty of the American people. You see, we are unique among armies. We are unique among militaries. We do not take an oath to a king or a queen, a tyrant or a dictator. We do not take an oath to an individual. No, we do not take an oath to a country, a tribe, or a religion. We take an oath to the Constitution. And every soldier that is represented in this museum, every sailor, airman, marine, coast guardsman, each of us will protect and defend that document regardless of personal price. How many warnings do we need from the people closest to Donald Trump himself? Again, don't take it from me. Take it from the people who know Trump best, who have worked alongside him, and who, as retired, unelected officials, have no skin in the game. Notice how the only people defending him are the people who stand to benefit from his presidency or who stand to lose their jobs if they attract his ire. The people embracing Trump right now are people who are looking out for themselves. And so knowing that there is nothing Trump could do to lose the support of his acolytes in today's GOP, it makes our job simple. It's not to reason with them. It's not to compromise with them. It's not to aspire to work hand in hand with them. It is simply to defeat them at the ballot box, to render them powerless. There's no coming back for the Lindsey Grahams and Tom Cottons of the world. They need to be relegated so deep into the minority that they wield zero power. And maybe only then will the rest of the Republican Party start to recognize that they have lost their way. But it doesn't happen until they suffer a decisive enough blow at the ballot box. We have a rare opportunity right Right now to do that. History is happening at this very moment. When we look back at 1930s Germany, it's hard not to think about what we would do if we were in their shoes. Well, right now, we are. So when we look back at today, make sure that you know that you did everything in this moment to protect this fragile democratic experiment at the moment that it mattered most. Before you go, just a quick note, if you'd like to see more of my content, which is always free of advertising, sponsorships, and paywalls, please make sure to subscribe to this channel using the subscribe button right here on the screen. And if you'd like to support my work even further, you can grab a copy of my instant number one New York Times selling book, Shameless, available for sale right now. That link is also on the screen. Thanks so much for watching.